We're now joined by my ex-teammate, Jimmy Butler of the Miami Heat. Jimmy, first of all, no, we haven't had a proper cheers. Congrats to you. Thank you, brother. On a, on a great contract. Uh, ended up in a great situation. Oh, yeah. All-star this year. You guys are... You guys are rolling. It's out. I'm happy it's for out. you, man. Thank you. I man. told you this when I saw yeah, you in no. November. I know. But I'm super happy for you. And for Duncan. You told me you were super happy for Duncan, too. <laughs> Why well, was I super happy for he Duncan? Did, he did. Like, he shot a lot of threes in the game. It was like, damn, that was impressive. Oh. He didn't that make a lot that game. He I did feel like something. He, I think he shot like 15 threes in a game or yeah. 18 threes in a game. It was something crazy like that. Tell, I said, tell Duncan. Yeah. Congrats. Like that's, and then you said, uh, I'm happy for him. Or something like that. I got to go back to my text messages. It's, it's something. But you, you like me and Duncan on Who's that. Who's the team. young guy that you have taken under the wing this year? Tyler. Tyler Hero. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about this. He's a, he's a lot like you, man. A lot like, like me? In the sense of like, I, you're like a, a black, white guy to me. Like your your steez, like how you go about shit. Like it's just like when mm, I first, mm, first met mm. JJ, I was like, this motherfucker went to sleep. I was like, oh, yeah, JJ got some shit too. <laughs> Tyler is the exact same way. Right. He can't swim, which is stereotypical. So I was like, man, when I first met him, like even his mannerism, the way he talks, and it's the part that really pisses me off, he got two younger brothers, and they are just like him. So there's just three like of them, them running around. Yeah. From the outside, I, I don't know Tyler. I've never yeah. met him. I haven't even spoke to him. Um, but his swag is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Just it's 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 different. And he he loves it. That's why I love his him, fits. His fits. His care. fits are crazy, man. He doesn't care. He's he's him. No matter if he's in Miami, in Milwaukee, anywhere in the world, Tyler's gonna be Tyler. Did you know right away first time you met him? Uh, I, I knew it was gonna be good. Because the way that he works, he, he works as though he's been in the league for uh, so many years. But with that being said, like from day one, Coach Pat and Coach Bo was just nailing that in his head. Like, you're going to work. We don't care that you were the, what's Tyler, the 13th pick. We don't care. We don't care that you were one and done. Like, you're going to work. You're going to earn everything here. And he's done that. He's done that. You guys have a lot of good players. I mean, they have the Pelicans have a little bit of the same issue where you have two. It's almost like you have too many players for the spots you have on the court. Like Duncan is another example of this. But before you say that, were they good players before, before? We were winning? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I don't know. I'm asking you. I'm yeah. on your podcast now. I'm asking you questions. Were which is, they? Which is, I don't know. What do you think? Y'all had good players, or the Pelicans got good players in Brandon Ingram, Drew Holiday, Lonzo. Zion, right, 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 right. Like, these guys are, you're talking top five picks, right? Like, they're supposed to be supposed to be the good players. Yeah. If we are, obviously, if we're, I don't know, 20 and however many, are they still good players? Are you saying that Miami Heat, like, you guys are, like, all underdogs? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would love to say that, but we do have really good players. Don't get me wrong, but I'm saying... Because we're winning, everybody gets the the recognition. Oh, that for they sure. Deserve. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So if we were, but there's losing, like there's like this. I feel like it's especially since like LeBron left. There's like this mentality, and it's an every it's it's there's an underlying sort of theme with like this underdog thing and this grit thing in every quote that I read on Hoops Hype that comes real. out of a Miami Heat person. The shit is real. It's real, and I think. Spo says it the best. This shit ain't for everybody. And it's not. The way that we move, the way that we operate, it's not for everybody. And everybody can't make it. Uh, but give, for the people give me that we a, have, Give me like a real world example of that. Like what it, what it, in terms of training or preparation that's different? Well, you also play for Tibbs too. I, exactly. So, you know, I, yeah. I kind of got a little glimpse of it. But um, no matter if you're on a, a minimum contract or a max contract, Everybody's running that conditioning test at the beginning of the year. No matter if you're on a minimum contract, a max contract, everybody's showing up to the plane in heat gear. Like it's it's the smallest things that just show who that organization is. I mean, come on, Coach Pat is in every practice at every home game. He's on a lot on the road. Um, but it's like all hands on deck. Everybody's in this thing. And we're not, we're not. But you ever have to, you to, have to get this is the NBA. You have to get buy-in from the best players. Yeah. You, I, 
so you buy into that yeah. from day one? Day one. And I like you, it. You like it. I like it. I like I like militant shit like that though. Like fucking do it. Right. I like I, I like it. I like when everybody is able to to be on the same page and, and nobody's more special than the next guy. Now don't get me wrong, there are levels to it. I'm not saying like me and this guy do everything the exact same way. No. But majority of the time, that that really do be the case. Like we don't we don't care who you are, what name you have, we're all doing it this way. Are you surprised? I mean, Tyler's one Duncan's another who we're going to have come down a little bit later. Are you surprised with some of these young guys that they've been able to sort of keep up with you? Because you're like, you'll whip the, you'll kick their ass. Like you'll whip mm-hmm. them in the shape and Spo will and Pat whatever like that. And so like to your point about it not being for everybody, like I think for certain young players, you know, no matter where you were drafted or where you put in college or whatever, there's a learning curve about like, okay, now you're in the big leagues and you're with guys who are gunning for you all the time. Like, do you think that that's just the culture that was like, they're here, they're here for a reason mentally? Yeah, without a doubt. But you got to also think like, nothing really was was handed to these guys. We're not talking about nothing against number one picks, number two picks, nothing against those guys because yeah. I was a number three pick. So I can't ever be mad at that. I was actually number 30. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the fuck? I'm <laughs> saying number three though. It just fits. It just fits. Yeah. Uh, so the guys that we have, we we legit think like, man, this guy, this is who you picked before me. Yeah. And so we just, we go about everything every day like that. Um, what do you think it is about like the heat though, that they're able to identify guys like that? I don't know. I, I Cause really they're like don't. searching them yeah, out. But Bam is like that too. Bam I mean, is that guy like is that. A, yeah. Bam, unbelievable. No. Yeah. Bam got some shit to him too. Like yeah. he takes a lot of things personal, but in the right way. And Bam is a lot like me when he will cuss you out and he's cussed me out on countless amounts of, uh, on countless occasions because I may not be doing what he knows that I'm capable of. Not saying that it wasn't good, yeah. but you got another gear and I know you can do it. I've seen you do it and we expect you to do that every single game. And I think that's our biggest thing right now. Like we have some big times, win- big time wins. And then we think that, yo, we're good, we're good, we're good. And we lay an egg so many times. Not saying you can't be beat by anybody in this league, but that's what I'm saying. Like, we're expected to do this every single day, every single game. So when we don't, we're disappointed in ourselves. That's the worst. That's the worst. Like, Spo don't even have to say nothing. He just come in the locker room and just look, and we're all like, fuck. Have you ever had a locker room or a culture like this before in your career? Nah. At no point. Nope. But like early Chicago no. days. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not like this. Really? Not like this. Yeah. Chicago was was way different. Uh because whenever I got to Chicago, like you're talking MVP Rose, Joe Kim in his prom, yeah, Lou Wild in his prom. So like those guys were moving way differently than yeah. a lot of other people. Um and with that being said, uh back in the day, like when I came into the league, the partying scene was like out of this world. So I'm looking at it like, you know, these guys are at the absolute peak of the NBA and I can see how you could easily get lost in this thing. So it it scared me. I was like, man, everything's right there at your fingertips. If you get lost in the mix of going and doing that and doing that, pretty soon you could be out of the league. And that's why I respected those guys so much because they stayed in like, tip top shape and stayed away from that. Or if they did go do whatever, nobody ever knew about it. Right. You, you know think the party was crazier then than it is now? Man, yeah. yeah. I did too. Without a doubt. That's I super interesting. I feel like it would be the why do you think that is? I feel like most guys back then though, no, I think for social media has something to do with it for sure. Agreed. Phones. Like Agreed. Just every, so, yeah. A lot of things careful. you don't want to be bothered, especially like Night before a game, mm-hmm. or even if you're staying in a city after a game, like you just don't want to be bothered. Like, so you're gonna, chances are you're gonna go to dinner and have some wine, yeah, or participate in other recreational things. But I, I think yeah. I think it's more so like the league is so young now. So a lot of these guys just play video games, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Back in the day, you grown men was in the league, like throughout the entire roster on teams, like. 
I don't know what the average age would be, but majority of everybody was of drinking age. Yeah. So you could go have a beer. If you drink beer, have wine. Hell, have three shots of tequila if you want. Uh, so I, I definitely think it was way more drinking and other shit going on back then. It's interesting. It, it feels like it's like we're on the – because they said that. They would have said that about the, the generation before them as well. Obviously, the NBA in the 70s and 80s was way crazier than anything that happened when you came into the league. And Social so it's like it's on, the, fucked it all up. it's on the better trajectory because of what the media, What fucked it up? Social media. Oh. Fucked it, it really all up. Did. It really did. No, yeah. You can't do nothing no yeah. more. Camera's always on you. You can't – also, you can't party and do your 3.30 a.m. workouts. What – um. I, I want to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. If I'm working out at 9 a.m., but I go really hard, yeah. does that mean I'm a hard worker? Yeah, you, you are okay. a worker. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 you can work hard at whatever point that you want to work hard at. 3 p.m.? I mean, like 3 p.m.? That's pushing. <laughs> Is it too late? That's today? pushing it. 3 p.m.? If I wait till what 3? are you doing before 3 p.m.? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm, I don't do that. I know. I'm just yeah. saying, like, I don't. There's the, a, the reason I do it, one, I saw. Uh, Mark Wahlberg do it. And I, I give him a, a lot of credit because that motherfucker has everything. Yeah. He has it. So but, is it legit with him, the 2.30 a.m.? Because yeah. I saw that schedule. No, the not, schedule was insane. Not, he did, he did the sketch with uh, Corden. Recently. But I never know yeah. how much of it is like, no, I'm just putting it out there, which is actually real. He one of the realest human beings I've, I've ever been around. And he works every single day like that motherfucker has nothing. And it's inspiring. Uh, it's so many other words. So when I I saw that shit for the first time, I was like, look, man, if this man is doing it and he got everything and I don't got shit, there, there's got to be something in it. Yeah. And now that I do it, like, it's, it's happening. And I got the rest of my day to do whatever I want. So what's the... How does... Hold on. How, what does he do to enjoy himself? Who, Mark? Yeah. Be around his people, one. Okay. Drink wine. But uh, he, he really does enjoy working, whether he's... Reading books or, or reading scripts, um, figuring out his car dealership as you could go to his social media. Check out Mark Wahlberg Chevrolet. They got some type of deal going on. I saw it. Uh, <laughs> what? That's what I'm in here. He do. Mark Fitch, Wahlberg has a Fitch Chevrolet Fitch dealership. Yeah. Wow. He's hustling. Man, he's look, got his man. hands in everything. I saw. Uh, uh, he, by the way, he's fucking everything up for every watch collector. Yeah. Because he's he buying. It. Everything. Everything. He got Him, it. Kevin Hart, and Ellen. You yeah. can, like you. I, I used to have a hookup with the the Patek and Forget Rolex place it. in Beverly Hills. Yep. No, Mm-mm. they get everything. They're buying everything. It's sick. So are they just stashing them? I'm just no, waiting for the Mark, Mark wears he, and K. So yeah, wear them. Mark and K. Kevin wear them. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And he he got me in that as well. Like I watches and wine that, that's from that's from that guy <laughs> now keep in mind i don't do it the way they do it because my money's not the way that their money is but i dabble in it a little bit for sure yeah it's good to dabble yeah it's good to dabble what was the original connection with mark uh, i know you told me one time but man he was in uh chicago filming for transformers and then he wanted to uh he wanted to play basketball with like his his guys so they put him in the Berto center which was where the bulls used to practice way up north now we're down we now they're downtown <laughs> i do that all the time like i'll sign 21 on stuff 22 on stuff 23 on stuff like yeah uh but yeah that's where they used to practice and he was in there filming one day and then they called me back to uh to go shoot with him and i right, man we end up hooping next day he's like yo come to the set and then i go to the set that night he was like, let's go watch the boxing match together. I go watch the boxing match. And then, man, just like a, a for real friendship just blossomed, like, out of nowhere. But he's, you know, he works hard where he's from. People not supposed to make it out. He did. He's always back there in the community. Loves his family, his brothers, everybody. Uh, that man. He's had a crazy career. Yeah. When you think about the the rapping. And then the all modeling. The, modeling. the modeling, and then modeling. all the different types of roles. He's not a one. He's not a one note actor. No. He plays comic. He plays action. He plays drama. The producing. Did you watch Entourage when you were go, like coming up? No, nah, I didn't. I mean, I've seen it, but like, yeah, not that because like that, that was a whole thing that even though he wasn't even in it, mm-hmm. that put him in a lane for for a certain type of audience because they're like, okay, I don't know much about Mark Wahlberg, but I assume his life is yeah. like that, and it's. 
It's something like that. Like obviously they're they're losing based do a, off everybody. We, next episode we're gonna do a power rankings of Mark Wahlberg roles. <laughs> we roles? Have done this yeah. one. Look, shooter is one to me. <laughs> oh my god. Shooter, 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 shooter is what really you good. said. That movie. Bob Lee Swagger <laughs> is terrible. Get the it fuck out of here. I don't tell me. Mark no, I said that. No, no. The Shooter is a board on the road what? movie. When that movie's on TV, you watch it. It won like 30 Oscars. <laughs> no, it did. <laughs> Mm, did you ever see? Great. Did you ever see Departed? Yeah, the Departed. That's a good the, movie Departed. Too. His, yeah, that's, that's a, a good, good movie. Departed actually good movie won best too. Movie. It's but a good movie too. Unlike the other one, two as in as okay. well. Also, Mark was great in Shooter. I can't say the rest for the rest of the cast. I'm just not. That's all that, not that, all that matters. Bob Lee Swagger. Star. He will shoot your face off. With I think the my favorite Wahlberg thing is thing the, the, the fighter. The Fighter is like one of the Fire best boxing too. movies The one with made. Christian Bale? Yeah, that movie's yeah. crazy good. He's Batman, so I like him. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this wine. This is, this is only the second time I've ever drank while doing the podcast. Mm-hmm. The other time I did was with Kyrie Irving in London, and I said that I didn't believe in dinosaurs. So- Hopefully you said that. I did. Oh. Yeah. We were taping he said two, the earth was we were flat. We at 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. 2 a.m. after a game. We were a London. little delirious. Um, tell us a little about, about the wine. About the this wine This specific wine. Yeah. I don't know too much shit about it. I told you that. Like, <laughs> I can't. I can barely pronounce the motherfucker. I just know that it's from my birth year. Okay. It's, uh, it's from Bordeaux. All right. Uh, that's basically all I got for you as of right now. Okay. I'm still learning, though. I'm still, it's I'm beautiful. still studying up on it. Thank you. It's beautiful. I'm still studying up on it because I, I think that's a big thing that I want to do uh, after my career is like start my own winery, legit, like go, y'all never see me again type. Like you're going to be the farmer? You're doing, you're yeah, winemaker? Yo, yo, you're going to hire a winemaker? Yes. Okay. Don't, don't do that. Just <laughs> don't, don't. I'm just saying winemaking is farming. It's one and the same. Yeah. But I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to do it. Okay. Like you, okay. you have a podcast, but you don't make the fucking mics. See what I'm doing? <laughs> exactly. I don't do that. What do you do? Like, what would you be doing right now in New Orleans if you weren't taping with us? Like, what do you do on the road? Uh, I'm playing dominoes with a few teammates. Man, other than that, I, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of books just to, like, update myself, especially on the wine stuff. Yeah. Um, and then me and my my trainer, James, he's always passing me different books to read. And it's What's just the best like, thing recently? To me? Look, I, I stick by this... Uh, uh, the monk who sold his Ferrari. Man, look, you read that book, it got you thinking about everything in life. And I read that shit. I started selling everything. <laughs> For real. Because it's like, you don't need all of this stuff. Yeah, You really don't. You don't. You really don't. You don't. Just because you can get it doesn't mean that you really need it. Was there something you did when you signed your contract? This one? Yeah. Nah. Did the same shit. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I, I celebrated a little bit differently. And I was turning 32, so it kind of- Where'd you go? I was in Barcelona. Oh, nice. We was in, we was in Barcelona, and me and the guys just- Did you took a, a PJ? Yeah. Thanks for the invite. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Look, let's if go If there was let's room on online. the plane. If there was room on the plane- JJ, I I'm invited. fucking invite, man. Podcast. Y'all, <laughs> see, <laughs> y'all see this? Let's, let's go uh, Let's go to, let's go to um, Burgundy this summer. I, I'm supposed to go. Let's but, go. But let's go. But you got to pay for the PJ. That's fine. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll go. Without a doubt. <laughs> we'll go. Is there anyone else in the league who is at your level, dominoes wise? No. Mm-mm. How often, like, we you play guys in the team? Yeah, and I'm going to win every time. So did they, did they, like, stop wanting to play you? Nah, you know, it's kind of like everybody cheers because <laughs> I talk so much shit that it's like when he does lose, which I have lost before. Yeah. But it's like, yes, he finally fucking lost. And then I get back on my win streak. When uh, we were teammates in Philly, I was part of the Boo Ray game. So yeah. Boo Ray, ideally, you play with four players. We had five players, and then Jimmy, when he got traded, became the sixth player. Yeah. And it took me all of one round <laughs> to get the fuck out of the game. Wait, who else was he in the game? is the most oh, I'm reckless. reckless player I'm reckless. I've ever Don't seen care. in my life. Who else Don't was in care. the game? Who was it? Uh, Amir. Me, yeah, Amir. Joel. Joel. Bub, Bo, our security <laughs> guard, Bo. our security Bo broke guard. ass. Uh, uh, Wilson Chandler and Wilson, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was it. And I played, I played one round, and it's like, first of all, there's an almost not enough cards if you have six players. Without a it doubt, it gets a little dicey with the cards. But 
be, because he would just stay in every time, the pot was just like it but was that's enormous. The goal. It is the goal up there because then but everybody took the get skill out. out of the game. It just became a random crapshoot. Play, <laughs> get your ass booted, <laughs> bastard. Do you do Do you do Vegas or no. Vegas? I don't really. I don't really gamble like that in casinos. I'll gamble with my teammates because I know whenever I lose. You're going to treat me to dinner, and I'm going to buy 13 bottles just like this. So <laughs> just I'm really right getting my money back either yeah. way it goes. One of my favorite stories from last year was uh, when we were in Salt Lake City, and we uh, we had dinner after the game. Oh, yeah. You're and, damn right. And there was like – we we probably had 13 of the 15 guys show up to dinner. Mm-hmm. A couple guys brought their people. Uh, maybe one person brought their wife, maybe. Yeah. I think there was somebody's wife who was yeah. there. So there was 20 people there or whatever. Killed it. Probably ordered twelve bottles of wine. Oh, yeah, and I had the I had the company credit card for the Sixers, <laughs> and I look over as we're like kind of finishing up the bill, and Jimmy had ordered like three sick bottles to go. <laughs> <laughs> we out of here. Give me the company card. <laughs> nah, you gotta yeah. do it. You got when, when you got the card. What? You gotta take advantage. Come on, man. It was a great team function, though. It really was. It, it was. Took we, full advantage of it. We've we've <laughs> talked about we talked about this with with Zach in Chicago. We talked about with a couple guys about like how different teams have different dynamics in terms of like how social everybody is. Do you think it like makes a difference? Like a team is a team like getting along or hanging out on the road. Like, can you have a good team if you don't do any of that, or does it sort of not matter? Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I really don't. Like, I think that you can get along with each other on the court and make it work. But sooner or later, like, if you don't like the individual, it, it'll it'll start to to trickle its way on the court. If you don't like to be around them, because you're around them, like, so often that if, if you're not vibing with the motherfuckers off the court a little bit, like, if you just, I mean, I got to avoid it, but I'm going to just handle my, my business on the court, it don't work like that. It don't, because now in the back of your head, it's like, I really don't fuck with this dude, but he's my teammate. Like, I think everybody got to be on a, on a, on the right page, or you just got to be honest about it. Like, if you honest about it, be like, yo, look, I don't fuck with you, but I'm coming to win, which a lot of people not going to say and do. I think that's okay, but people not just going to come be like, yo, look, we here to win. I don't fuck with you, but let's win this championship. No, I don't work like that. You, you, you've been in both locker rooms, right? You've experienced yeah. both sides of that. Yeah. Have you ever told someone I don't fuck with you? Uh, Maybe not in those words. I'm trying to think. Nah. No, 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 no. Because I, man, look. Sometimes I wish that guys would just say that to each other. I, 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 I agree. think that's. It's not that I don't fuck with you. You may not fuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. But you that's won't say it. That's a good point. It. Yeah, that's a you good point. You won't say it. That's a good point. Um, Are they just scared to say it to you? Probably so. Probably so, but uh, uh, not too many people are like real ones, quote unquote, or that's going to tell you exactly how yeah. it is. I would like to think that I am like that. Like, I'm, I'm going to tell you when you're on some bullshit. I'm going to tell you when I think that you could do better, yada, yada, yada. And I think, you know, people don't like that, but a lot of people aren't like that. Like, they're not, they're not going to tell you like that. Was last year difficult for you? Yeah. Not, not just getting traded, but the yeah, whole no, shit yes, in the summer, preseason. Yes, yeah. Hell yeah, it was difficult. Man, it, it, it was so different. And I, on any given day, me as a as a person, as a player, I didn't know who the fuck was in charge. I think that was that was my biggest thing. I didn't know what the fuck to expect whenever I would go into the to the gym, whenever I go into the plane, whenever I go into the game. I was like, man, I I would think I was as lost as the next motherfucker. Meaning there was just there was a just, lot of voices. Yeah. And a lot of input so much, from a lot of different places. And just so much going on on any yeah. given day. I was like, yep, I'm just, I guess I'm just here to work. I didn't even know who to talk to. At what point did you like realize that? At what point did... And that fucking <laughs> meeting in the office that I told you that. <laughs> I told you that. I was like, I cannot believe. Wait, when he brought... When Brett when he brought, brought... So uh, Brett brings me, you, Joe and Ben. Joe and Ben. This is pre-Tobias trade. Yeah. Was this before or after... The in like obviously I'll I'll tell my side of the story about what happened in Portland with yeah. you with you in the meeting. Yeah, that, that, they got this, reported. This is before or after that. I don't before. remember. It was before. It was okay. before. Before we went on that West Coast trip yeah. then. Yeah. Okay. It was before. And we're all sitting in there yeah. and nothing got accomplished at all. 
So I was like, and I told you this as we walked out, JJ, why would I ever go back in there again? Like nothing's getting accomplished. Nobody's saying nothing to anybody. And we just sitting in here watching film and you can literally hear the thing just clicking. And we all just looking around. <laughs> and but you gotta think. Now I'm just like what well, I may have been two, three weeks there tops. Yeah, it was the first first month. Yeah, yeah. Easily. So, you know what? I'm sent back and I'm watching. I ain't saying nothing, because don't nobody know me like that. When I first got to Philly, what did you think of me? I I I didn't know. I I I didn't. But if you, I, if I you go about what you read, yeah. what do you, what do you think? Oh about? yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm sitting that back, right. and I'm relaxed. I'm like, these motherfuckers think I'm an asshole, anyways. Let me be quiet. So I'm sitting back. I'm hearing it. Click, click. I'm looking around. Click, click. All right, guys, let's go practice. Why did we just go through this? <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what's going on in my head. So I come to you. I said, JJ, why would I go back in there again? We didn't do nothing. Nothing got accomplished. So. Now we fast forward to however many uh, weeks is over there and we're in Portland. And then that happens during the film session because once again, wasn't nobody saying nothing. So who was the individual that decided to finally say something? Here's the fucked up part. You did one thing wrong. What did I do? I, nothing you said about the team was wrong. I thought your interaction with Brett that day was like a normal interaction. I don't know why it got reported the way it did. Because it was me. Yeah, because you were coming off whatever happened in Chicago, whatever happened in Minnesota. Yeah, I get mm -hmm. it. But nothing was weird. <laughs> but so he's like, basically he's like, there's some tweaks to the offense. I think some other guys on the team feel the same way. And who did he throw under the bus? I didn't throw you him threw, under the bus. You threw the nicest guy. You I threw TJ McConnell under the bus. I did not throw him under the bus. I did not say his name. <laughs> and, and, and I did not say his name. Jimmy goes, TJ wants more pick and roll. I did not say that. I did not say that. This is what I did, okay? I, I did not say TJ. He said, who else feels the type of way about it? Now, keep in mind, everybody comes to talk to me because they know I'm not afraid to be the asshole. So, obviously, I talked to him. Brett asked a great question. Who else feels the type of way about something? All I did, I didn't hear nothing behind me. I just knew somebody was going to speak up because I had talked to about five people. Crickets. So, I turned around, and the first person I just happened to lock eyes with was TJ. So, Monty goes, yo, now for real, now's the time. TJ was like, well, you know, I was like, TJ, man, if you don't <laughs> say what you got to say. And I love TJ. I talk to TJ all the time. Okay. But um, but I just feel like like it's okay to, to speak your mind. Ain't nothing wrong with it. The worst thing that Brett could have said was, fuck you. No. And then you just go back to just being quiet. But <laughs> at least you get to say what you got to say. I, do, I, You know how I feel about Brett. Yeah. I, I like I like. I love Brett and all that. And I, I know your relationship wasn't the same, but. Sure was not. Towards the end of the year, though, as we sort of, we did sort of tweak how the offense was run, especially in the playoffs, mm -hmm. where you were playing on the ball more. Did that relationship evolve at all? Or was it strictly a professional relationship? Uh, I would say it was professional. But to this day, I don't, I don't think that that was, I don't think that that was fair. To, to switch over like that. Even though I think we played great basketball yeah. like that, I don't think it was fair because the entire year, Ben had the ball. The entire year, yeah. Ben had the ball. Yeah. So you mean to tell me that in one playoff series, you just switch it up like that? I would be like he was. Yeah. I would be. I would feel a type of way. Yeah. I would feel a type of way. I would think that it's fucked up to play one way the entire year and then be like, you know what? Boom. This is how we're going to do it. And I, I used to tell bro, I was like, bro, I think we should mix in me handling the ball a little bit. No, we do A to B, we do this. Cool. Yeah. Cool. But I, 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 I would be pissed. And I, I didn't, I mean, I'm not going to complain about it, um, but I don't, I, don't, I don't think that that was the best way of, of doing it, in, in my opinion. When that, when that Kawhi shot went in, yeah. what was going through your head? What was going through my head? Besides, I mean... Uh, a lot. A lot was going through my head, man, and I already knew how 
I believe it would have worked out if that shot wouldn't have went in and we go into overtime and we win. Um, so the shot goes in, we go back to the locker room. I'm, I'm in awe a little bit. And then after like everything settles down, the first thing that, uh, comes to my mind legit is, will I be back here? Will I have an opportunity to do this again with these guys? Uh, I, and to tell you the truth, I had a feeling that it would be a no. I had a feeling that it would be a no. Um, but I, I would say that, that that's the first thing that, that ran through my head was, yo, are we actually going to be able to run this back? And if I'm being honest, I was like, nah, it's not going to happen. That was my first thought too. Yeah. Was like, well, not my first thought. There's the disappointment. There's yeah, the no, tears. No, there's the hug your teammates. Yeah. But then like it's like the realization, like, shit, I might not might not get this close again. Right? Man. You think that? I knew I wasn't coming back when I had my exit meeting with Elton. And he didn't t- say that to me, like, we don't want you back. I just knew like they were gonna I was only gonna go back there if they had no other options, mm. basically. I really that's how I mean. That was the vibe I got in that meeting. So I kind of knew. I kind of knew. When did you know? <laughs> oh, shit. I knew I wasn't going back. At one point in time, uh, I, now, before I say this sentence, do you think I'm like just that hard to work with? <laughs> Am I hard to work is this with? From the, is this the phone call after free agency? Is this from the phone call? Is this what you're talking about? No, no, no. This is this is before the phone no, call. No, I don't think you're hard to work right? with. Yeah. No, I'm not hard to work with. So, I ain't throwing nobody under the bus since you think that I seem to throw people under the bus. Somebody told me that uh, a main reason that I, I didn't go back was because Somebody asked, can you control him? Like, can you control Jimmy? If you can control Jimmy, we would think about having him back. Yeah. I was like, you don't got to worry about it. <laughs> shit, can't nobody fucking control me. For one, I ain't just out there doing no bullshit. But the fact that you're trying to control a grown man, nah, I'm cool. Because I don't do nothing that's just drastically fucking stupidly crazy. <laughs> I do not do that. So don't sit here and come at me with the, Oh, we got to try to control them. No, you good. Don't even worry about it. And that was that was my what you call it. You ain't got to worry about me coming. I'm not. If that's what y'all worried about, if that's what y'all worried about, I think, man, good luck to y'all. If that's what y'all worried about. At what point in free agency? I mean, was this? Oh, this was uh, before. This was early. Yeah, early. Yeah, yeah, super early. Super early. Super early. And then it's so all kind of change. You start have to exploring other things. Shit, thought I was, I was knee deep in that already. <laughs> shit, shit, already, 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 uh, really knew what it was. Like when I heard about Miami, you know, we we talked about it as a as a group, me and my family, me and my trainers, and all of that stuff. It all, man, it all worked out. And then obviously, when the meeting came around. We sitting in there and we talking, talking about the roster, man, talking about obviously I had sunshine, what everybody already knows. But the way that they just do shit, you know, we work every single day. It's nothing drastic, but we do work. We expect you to to come in here and, and help us win. We're not trying to lose. No, never. Yeah. Every single year, we're in it to win it now. We ain't worried about three years. We, we can't control that. And that's how I think. I think like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do tomorrow. Yesterday's gone, but right now I'm going to be the best version of me that I can be. And that's how Miami does it. I don't know how every other team do it. I can tell you how Chicago does it, Minnesota does it, and Philly does it. Um, But Miami's way different than all those teams that I just named. You seem much happier. Hell yeah. I get to be me. I ain't worried about nobody trying to control me, first of all. That's some (laughs) fucked up shit. Yeah. Somebody trying to control somebody. Uh, but I get to be me. And and being who I am every single day is exactly what they ordered. I I, I say what I want to say um, the way I want to say it. I think I've gotten better at relaying it to this guy, that guy. 
this woman that's walking around, whatever it may be. Um, but they know that where it's coming from is from the heart. And it's because I want to win. Like, I don't have time. Like, Tyler knows. And I think me and Tyler have a mutual respect. Yeah. If I see some bullshit with you, Duncan, Bam, whoever it is, I'm 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 telling you right there. It might have some cuss words in it. But no, because I know that you could do better. I know that you could be better. I've seen it. I've seen that. If I ain't seen it, I probably wouldn't get as mad as right. I probably would. But they they know that, man. I care about winning and I care about them as an individual. Legit. You have any good uh power alley stories? Not not yet, man. Not yet. I'm waiting for some shit to go drastically wrong where that <laughs> motherfucker coming up just kicking <laughs> shit. I mean, he really is. He's one of the very few active sort of NBA OGs. It's the best. Like, like he'll do it eventually. It's the best. I hope that it never comes to that point. Yeah. I love having like you talking about a winner. Oh yeah. He's done it. Yeah. He's done it. Did you say you had a question for him about TJ Warren? Uh did you tell what? me that a question for TJ Warren? No, it wasn't a specific question. I was curious. I was curious about you in general in those situations. When like something like that happens and everybody is everyone makes a big thing about it on Twitter for da da da. Are you thinking about it like two days later or are you just like, I don't give a shit? Like, because you're a competitor, so you're playing. I'm not thinking about the altercation. I don't care. Nobody's fighting, okay? Yeah. Nobody's fighting. I'm thinking about what's said in the altercation. That's what gets me. That's what took it there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not fighting. We get it. Still don't understand why I got fired more. Whatever. But what was said is what got me. So I'm just like, yo, look, now I'm thinking about that. And that, that's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not about the foul and this and that. It's, it's about like some stuff you just do not say. Yeah. I felt like the line was crossed. And that's what I was thinking about two days, three days, two months. <laughs> when do you play them again? A couple of times. There you go. There it's you on go. his IG page. <laughs> <laughs> circled in red or with black, whatever it's circled in. Do you think that, uh, and I think Phillies obviously might be an example of this, but do you think that teams can have just too many alphas? Well, what's your definition of an alpha? So, I mean, I think you could probably define it in a couple of different ways, but you are obviously an alpha, not just in terms of like on the court production. You're talking like that. about like really good players? No, but it's not just really good players. It's just like the person who has to be the star. You're the star. Every team you go on, you're the star. But can it, if you versus JJ is an mm-hmm. amazing shooter, but he's a, he fits in. He's a really smart player. He's a very smart player. I'm not a beta, though. But he's not. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't call him an alpha. (laughs) And so, about an alpha player. He's an alpha off the court. He's an alpha (laughs) when it comes to food blogs. No, you do that. You're a foodie. And watches. And expensive restaurants. He's an alpha you, when it comes what are to. What you saying here, Tommy? You dug yourself <laughs> right. a hole, here, guy. You got to deal with that. I don't. Have I got to deal, deal with this after the fact. But so you know, obviously, a team like Philly with with you. When you talk about really good players, yes. not JJ, not JJ, <laughs> yeah, right? forget JJ, <laughs> forget, JJ. <laughs> forget JJ for a second. What the fuck? <laughs> Why do they call him JJ anyways? <laughs> is that a thing? Is that a thing? Now that you've been on this, is your fourth locker room with all different iterations of this? Is that a thing where you can have too much? Of a good thing. That's in everything in life to me. Too much of a good thing can turn into a bad thing. Now, I go back to what I'm saying. But if you if you know and you have like, okay, yeah, you can have three or four alphas, whatever it is. Um, but like you got to know which one is really the one. You know, yeah. like I think whenever you you put it in order and you make sure that everybody's playing their role and playing it to a T, it can work. But when everybody don't know what's going on on any certain day, you don't know. It's 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 not gonna work that way. But you 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 gotta boom. This is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. And I can tell you that it works because um, we do it in in Miami. This motherfucker Spo would come in the locker room and Duncan. Why in the fuck did you dribble the ball inside the three? Like, we'd be like, what? Like, he's hooping. <laughs> Duncan, you're a fucking shooter. Shoot the fucking ball. But that's letting Duncan know, like, it's all right for me to shoot 
twenty threes. Right. Nobody's gonna get mad at me because that's what I do. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if you're supposed to go out there and guard, go out there and guard. Don't go out there and try to. I mean, if you can score fifty, score fifty. But don't go out there thinking like oh, I'm not gonna guard. Nah, Spoke gonna let you know. And I feel like on any given team, everybody got to know their role from the jump. If if and if it changes, it changes. But then you talk about that as well. But if if you don't know your role. It's different. It's difficult. I feel like someone saying, I don't know my role is code for I don't like my role. Do you know what I mean? I agree. Because there's like, let's but, just talk about with like really good players, as, yeah. as Tommy said. Yeah. Like, so, so let's say a team. Of- <laughs> so I'm not <laughs> talking about myself. Of course. No, just for argument's sake, take him out of it. <laughs> B or C level. Okay. <laughs> so for uh, for really good players, let's say there's three or four on a team, uh-huh. right? Obviously, someone's going to have to sacrifice. If there's not like a clear delineation, and on a team, not like in competition between two different teams, but on a team, it's not necessarily you want to be competitive with those guys. That can lead to a little friction. So I think there's got to be someone, either a player, a coach, someone that sort of delineates who that guy is or who that one or two guy is. And then ultimately, you need to have guys who have the personality and are able to mm-hmm. sacrifice. Great example of this. Obviously, Miami Heat with the big three, right? Bosch had to be the guy that sacrificed. You saw early on with D Wade and LeBron, they're friends, obviously, but there was that sort of tug and pull who's the guy? And then once LeBron became the guy, they win championships. Yeah. But I would say all three of those guys had to sacrifice now. Yeah. Like, not saying that like LeBron didn't have to sacrifice, he, he for sure did. But I think where me and you were like, I'm not having a disconnect, but you're saying if somebody says I don't know my role, that means that they don't like the role, right? I'm saying it shouldn't even come to that. Before you don't know your role, I'm in charge. I'm the, I'm going to tell you what your role is. So you don't even have to worry about not knowing your role. You see what I'm saying? Like that's like whenever teams now they're trying to uh shoot layups or shoot the three, right? Um if anybody on any certain team decides, you know what, I'm going to shoot mid-range jump shots, okay? Let's just take the Houston Rockets, for example. Who shoots mid-range jump shots on the Rockets? Russ. Russ, right? Okay, great. Russ is the player that can do that. His role, yo, shoot that fucking mid-range jump shot. Now, when Ben McElmore decides to shoot mid-range jump shots, he may get in trouble. That's not your role. But I think they have that figured out. So it's okay. They make that work. Right. That's what I'm saying. You didn't have to question if, oh, coach, can I shoot? I don't know if I can shoot. Nah, you be you. You be the right. player that you be. I'm saying like, if you don't know your role, yeah, you probably don't like your role. But if you know it and you don't like it, that's your fault. It's correct. Correct. And you, you have, have to, know you nobody have to can be do willing to embrace and star well, in your own role. Exactly. Well, I guess my point was, in not my point, but I guess my observation will be, that it's not on every team that you yeah. know your role because it's not – there's not that delineation or the coach doesn't say it or That's the true. best player doesn't say it or the culture doesn't sort of That's true. adhere to that. Where That's true. It's a little confusing. Yeah. Especially if you're be. a young guy. And, and I was going to say, if you're a young yeah. guy, that shit's going to be hard. You're trying to figure it out. That shit's yeah. going to be hard. Was yeah. it like that with the Clippers? Uh, I was telling <laughs> I was telling someone this the other day. Doc would – at some point in preseason, not – necessarily like the first day of camp, but at some point in preseason, we would start practice and we'd come in for the, you know, Mm -hmm. one, two, three together at the jump circle and he would stop it and he would just say, I'm going to tell you your roles today. And he'd go around the room and sometimes you didn't like what you you heard or whatever. Um, And one, my last, going into my last year, so the year before was Steph's unanimous MVP. Mm -hmm. And um, I had led the league in three-point shooting that year. So going into the next year, we're in preseason and he's going through his role. And obviously, you know, he's like, Chris, you're, you're the lead ball handler, you're a playmaker, you're a defender, whatever. Goes through everybody, he gets to me and he's like, JJ, you're one of our shooters. And I don't know why, but it bothers me so much that he said that. I'm like, one of our shooters, man. I'm fucking the shooter guy. I don't know the why that you bothered think this me is? so much. I'm a fucking alpha. <laughs> alpha goddamn shooter. I'm a really good player. <laughs> no, wow. No, but Doc was great with that. No, yeah. Stan was great with that. Those two guys, at least Tiggs. my experience in the NBA, those Tiggs were the two best with that. Yeah. 
you knew exactly what you're supposed to like Stan, you knew exactly what you're supposed yeah. to do. And you stay within that. And if you start within that, maybe that next year you might get a little bit more. Yeah. But it was like a gradual build. Yeah, for sure. Because it was like if you if you do your role and he does his role and he does his role, we have a chance to win. Yeah. And that's all that fucking matters. Right. Do you think your career would have been different if you hadn't come into the league with Tibbs? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Because he sort of taught you yeah. how to work? Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't play me. And I'm going to keep saying that until he feels bad that for not playing me. But, uh, yeah. And I'm not I'm not going to say it was because of Tibbs. I came into the league with some some really good vets. Like Luau, when I would get pissed off, he would be like, you got to keep working. Your time's going to come. Trust me. Yada, yada, yada. Booze, Joe Kim, um, D. Rose. Everybody was like, you got to work. Your time is, is going to happen. You're here for a reason. Um, but you got to be ready because if you're not, it's on you. Yeah. So as much as it was Tibbs, it was even more my teammates at the time that that taught me you got to work no matter what. So, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of props and it got to be said about them. They, they kept me in it. That is, that is some of the luck of all this stuff of like, there's so much luck in everything you know? though. Yeah. Like luck is a, a part of, of life, you know, talent, skill, God given all of that stuff is part of it. But I got lucky to end up going to Marquette because if buzz when it just came down um, to my junior college and, had already had Joe Fols going, he would have never met me. I would have never met him. The chances of me going to Marquette even lower now. Like luck is a luck is a part of everything. Yeah, we did we did a thing on the uh, our last show with Drew. We we're talking about top five. Would you call it back alley? I didn't call it anything. This was a Twitter question. <laughs> I so didn't top, the question. <laughs> top five. Top five. Yeah. Uh, basically, back the alley guys you wouldn't want to run into in the back in the dark yeah. alley. James Johnson is number one. That's what we had. James Johnson will kick your fucking face off. Like, without a doubt. James is is a bad dude. Uh, I don't know. I never really fucking thought. I just, I know James is, look, that's my dog. Who did too. we have? We had Pat. We had Beverly. We had James because he can fight. Yeah. We had Aaron Baines. Baines. We didn't have the Morrises because you couldn't pick one of the two of them. So they were off coming off the bench. So they were like sixth and seventh men. We had Smart. PJ and you. I can't remember if you were in the starting five though. Okay. I, I take six <laughs> man. Well, you were also definitely the you're definitely the only all-star. There's no one else who's those are those eight guys. Huh. Is there anyone who's like a low key, just like a vet or something like that that people wouldn't think about, but you're like, just don't fuck with that guy. I mean, I, I to tell you the truth, I, I would say U D. Mm-hmm. I really would. Mm-hmm. I would say U D. You do still one. go about shit like he's 17 years old. Like in like, yo, look, I'm Miami to the death of me. This is this is he what I do. Hard, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rightfully so. Yeah. Um, he loves his city, he loves his state. Then it's right back to him. Um, but he's one that I'm I'm glad he in my corner. I tell you that. When was the, the was the last good NBA fight, CP and Rondo? Like where there was actually punches thrown? Has there been one this year? Uh, not that I can remember. I felt like there was. There's a good college fight this year. Kansas yeah, won. yeah, that was a chair. <laughs> maybe, maybe you could be right. Like the only scuffle we've had for a while is the T.J. Warren Jimmy Butler Jimmy. scuffle. But well, no. you're right because no one wants to fight. It's too, it's too much money. Ain't nobody fighting. Yeah, ain't nobody. It's fighting. too much. You got to do something like crazy, crazy in like, order to like like spit on someone. Yeah, that 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 yeah. might do it. Yeah. That just that might could do aggravate it. someone. Yeah, just <laughs> could, a little bit. What was the What was the All Star thing you were saying when we were walking in? Man, I think All Star is just there's just too much that's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it about the players really? I mean, I I, I love the fans, but sometimes like you really do need a break. Uh, and then like you know everybody wants to experience All Star. Like if JJ's an All Star, man, you're alpha in my book, right? <laughs> So all your boys, all your boys want to come to All Star, right? Yeah. So let's just say, give me a number. How many people you bring to All Star? Uh, Knox and Kai. Okay, that's two. <laughs> Chelsea, three. Uh, and then I probably, I mean, if I if I made the All Star game, yeah. oh, I've got like my whole family, all the cousins and nephews, uh, probably some friends. I'd probably say like 30, 30, 30 people, right? Yeah, for the weekend. 
Right. For the weekend, right? Yeah. And um, you want them all to come watch you play an all-star game. For sure. Right. Experience the weekend with me. You know what I mean? Why you got to buy 30 tickets? Why Why do you get one hotel room from the league? That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's all-star. It's supposed yeah. to be about the player. Like, yeah. they, should you, have you kinda, they should have a whole, a whole hotel, basically. That's all yeah. that I'm saying. Yeah. I, I feel as though... Like we we gotta go. It's not like it's optional. It's not like it's optional. Like I, I think it's a a privilege and a pleasure to be able to be an all star. But look, I'm a. I would rather spend my money on on something else rather than all star tickets. Well, I also think like you know the way the NFL does it is obviously different with the Pro Bowl where it's after the season and it becomes like you can go if you're whoever and you make the Pro Bowl. You're Pat Mahomes. Oh, he's a bad example because he's in Super yeah, Bowl, Super but Bowl. whatever. Like you can go and it's a vacation. Like you don't have to worry about going and playing again. Like for you, it's like you that just get a, on yeah. a Thursday night, you have a crazy game, you're in this mental headspace, then you gotta go and deal with all this shit for three days. And luckily they gave you a couple of extra days off, so it's not you're right back into it. But at the same point, like you gotta now focus on playoffs. And then no, and the I just stretch. think sometimes you just need you need a break. You yeah. need a break. You need it to clear your your head and you're talking from the all-star break being from a could be a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday starting for some people all the way into that following Wednesday. That's seven days. And if you, you know, got to participate in all-star, that's taken away. And now you only got that Monday and Tuesday, then you probably got to go back. So you got, you're talking two days to spend it with your friends, families, loved ones, all of that. Uh, and then you, you, you right back to work. Like I would think that me being me, you know, look, I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I'm already in the sunshine, but going, you know, down to wherever. The Caribbean. Yeah. And enjoying On seven PJ. days with, you know, with my you people. You know where it is next year? Cleveland? Cleveland? Indy. Indy. Indy, that's where it's at. Indy, Indy. They, go, they go Indy, Cleveland, back to back, yeah. right? Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Indy, Cleveland. I hope, by the way, I really do hope that you make All-Star the next two years. <laughs> I really hope Just to that. Do it. Wow. JJ's got in trouble on this show before. I really for, hope uh, that. for his comment. No, I mean that. It'd be a huge honor, man. Thank you, man. You know I what? Really hope I that. hope you do too, Alpha. <laughs> his his commentary on the city of Indianapolis has uh, gotten the show. And <laughs> it's a great city. <laughs> it's a water. great city. <laughs> it, it's hot water before. Do you think the. It's uh, a terrific city if you're into chain steakhouses. You, <laughs> exactly. That. Three steakhouses <laughs> right next to each no, other. No, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Look. The best part of Indiana. How, by the way, can I just say something real quick? Sorry to interrupt. How is it? How, what year is this for the league? Nine or ten? This is my ninth. Okay, ninth. So this is 14 for me. How is it that we're going to Indianapolis and we're still staying at the Conrad? Can you explain that to me? That is true. How There's is another that hotel there that's nice? The one right next to Elmo's is nice. I don't know that hotel. Oh, I don't know what hotel is. But how are teams still stay at the Conrad? It's the same. It, like the hotel has not been updated. In 14 years, at least since I've been going. Some teams stay at the uh, J. Is it J. Alexander? Uh, the, Alexander? The one the near one the arena. arena. Yeah. Yeah, I stayed there one time. They, they didn't the bring arena. my to, to go. They're all my, within my, four my room service. Oh. They didn't bring my room service pregame. Uh, so, yeah. I, I shot two back, for 12. Back to the Conrad. <laughs> back to the Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, what's the name of the bakery that's there? Uh, Long's Bakery? Donuts are to die for. Oh, there is a bakery. Ooh. There's also a breakfast place that's supposed to be amazing. I heard that this uh, one of our trainers, yeah. Brandon slash Brian, uh, told me about this right around the corner from. Uh, and then there's a restaurant called Bluebird or Blackbeard or Bluebeard. One of the, one of the three. <laughs> one of those. It's a thirty three percent chance that you get that right. <laughs> you got one of the words right in it. I've been there. It's good. It's good. The food there's pretty good. It's just everything's yeah. in the same three block stretch. Yeah. It's a very odd place. You don't. Uh, I have a question. You don't have to answer this, but how the fuck do you fix the Bulls? Mm. How do you fix the Bulls? Yeah. Uh, because I was in Chicago. Look, I was in Chicago. And we're gonna edit that's this yeah. part. Out. I was in Chicago and it was bleak. I do not know. I, I have I have no idea. Um, but I will tell you one thing: they got some players. They got some guys that can play. Now, to get them to win, I don't know. I, I hope that they do though. Because um, Chicago deserves it. Ch- Chicago deserves to like be in the playoffs and compete because that city cares so much. Those fans still come out to the game. And obviously, I got a lot of love for Chicago, the people there, um, the organization. Uh, but, I mean, I really do think that they're going to figure it out. I really do. They're close. They're right there. Yeah, they're like, they do have a lot of – they have a lot of talent. Yeah. 
They're right there. They're, they're right there to what? To make the eight seed. They're like a, a couple games back. Who in eight right now? Cleveland? Uh, I said Cleveland. Orlando. Brooklyn? Orlando, Orlando and Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Are, are really battling it out for the seventh and eighth seed. Right? Yeah. yeah I, I would think Chicago is, what, four games outside of that? Maybe four to 12. We'll look it up oh, later. Yeah. Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. Who's keeping count? <laughs> Who's keeping count? Probably nine. Are there Probably nine? nine. It ain't, it ain't Bro, they, they don't have 20 wins. Yeah, they do. I'm almost positive they have 19. Mm, no. Okay. All Is right. there a young guy you played this year, rookie or second year guy, that you were just surprised by in terms of how, how ready yeah, they are? They're a lot. They're a lot. You're talking about Luca, my brate. That's, that's a Slovenian for brother. Um, Goran taught me that. Um, Trey Young is for real. Donovan Mitchell's for real. Uh, who else is for real? You got you got some young guys that can go. You really do got some young guys that can go. So you, you can you could go down the down the list. Uh, thank you for bringing the wine. Appreciate you both and your thank wonderful you for sense of humor and candor, uh, Tommy. Cheers to you, bud. Cheers. Uh, Mark Wahlberg should be late. Be there or be square. <laughs> should we have Mark Wahlberg on this show? We yeah, do why not? It? I think he would. Would you guys do it together? Uh, yeah. I like Bring that the wine. Be. Bring the wine. What's, your, what's it like when you got, with just the two of you at dinner? What's your, what do you guys talk about? Any and everything. He one of us. Like, he just, he just works. Love yeah. life. Loves his family. For real. Talk about wine. Uh, yo, you should get this watch. You should look into that. You should look into that. I mean, I look up to the guy crazy like he's like a mentor to me whatever he gets in i'm probably gonna get in it like yeah, just because that's he's uh he's so successful in all the business things that he does um but he's just he's always looking out for me man so i gotta look out for him go to mark Wahlberg. she'll be like go get you a tahoe baby go get your tahoe <laughs> all right jimmy thank go you go get the tahoe jj <laughs> jimmy thank you for your time it's really appreciated <laughs> And he's um, getting the Tahoe <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> I'm not getting a Tahoe because I had a Tahoe for six years and I got the Tahoe pre Uber. And then I, by the time I was done with the Tahoe, my teammates would come up to me in the practice facility and be like, Are you my ride? <laughs> <laughs> Pablo Prigioni did that to me every day. Oh my God. <laughs> Is it? No, a different car.